Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, and we are here in the studio today with Dr. Russell Gollard from uh, Nevada Cancer Specialist, a medical oncologist over there and the medical director. For those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast here in the studio Thursdays at 10 a.m. You could catch us live on Facebook on VegasVideoNetwork.com slash live. And along the way, if you have any questions, feel free to enter those and send those into the show, and we'll be happy to ask our guests that question. Uh, Here on Inside Medicine, we like to bring in the experts of healthcare in Las Vegas, those doing amazing things, opening up new practices, uh, contributing to the growth of medical education in the Valley, and things, people that are uh, treating our our, our population here. Today, we've got somebody from Nevada Cancer Specialists, and we are happy to have you in the studio, Dr. Gollard. Welcome. Thank you very much. So before we get started to start talking about the practice, we want to get to know you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you grew up, where you went to med school. and Oh, sure. Well, I'm uh, from the southwestern part of the United States, so I uh, did not have to travel uh, that far to be here. Uh, born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Uh, went to uh, UCLA as an undergraduate, USC mm-hmm. for medical school. Stayed at big L.A. County USC Medical Center mm-hmm. for my internship and residency and then went down to Scripps Clinic, where I did three years in hematology and medical oncology before moving here to Southern Nevada in 1996. So you're board certified internal med, yes. hematology, yes. and uh, oncology. And, and medical oncology, as, yep. w- as well as in palliative care and hospice. Oh, yes. my. So for those that may not have the broadest description of all of these, tell us the difference between these different board certifications. Oh, sure. Well... What the American Board of Internal Medicine does is to ensure quality uh, and some uniformity in the uh, practitioner's uh, database is to, after a required training process, namely internship, residency, and or fellowship, you become board eligible. After you become board eligible, you sit for exams. Uh, and it, when you pass these exams, you become board certified. Now, board certification used to be a forever title. Uh, mm-hmm. You could uh, be board certified if you graduated from one of these training programs prior to 1990, took your exam. You were board certified forever. However, that's not true anymore. Now you only get 10 years, then you have to recertify. So uh, that really emphasizes to us that we're always students. We're always learning, and that's good because the fields are changing so much that it's important to have that scholarly attitude towards what we do, keep up on the journals, keep going to conferences, and realizing that you know this is a dynamic place to be, and we have to be current. Which board certification did you get first, and how, what did that I guess, that the path look like moving forward? Because you've got well, several, which most yes. don't. Yes, well, I started out in internal medicine, mm-hmm. and internal medicine is the base of all the subspecialties, I should, I should say. So in order to become board certified in a subspecialty of internal medicine, like medical oncology or hematology or gastroenterology, cardiology, or rheumatology, for that example, you first need to get your certification in internal medicine. And you become eligible after spending three years in an approved program. Okay. So did you get medical oncology next or hematology next? Well, medical uh, oncology and hematology are usually combined programs. Okay. Some people do one or the other, Mm -hmm. but I went down to Scripps Clinic in San Diego and we combined the two. It took three years. And so I was there in the clinic and in the research laboratories for a total of three years. And it was just an incredible experience. Wow. And then you moved to Las Vegas. When did you move to Las Vegas and what brought you here? 1996. um, Well, what brought me here was, well, really were, uh, I say in the plural, two things. Mm -hmm. Uh, Number one, my wife was from here. And uh, when we moved here, we had an uh, 18-day-old child. Oh, my. So we'll uh, we'll never never forget that. Um, 
And uh, she had her uh, grandmother here. And so that was a very, very big deal. Uh, obviously, it was our first child. And uh, also opportunity and need. Uh, when I came here, I was told I was the 14th uh, oncologist in the area. There weren't very many oncologists uh, or hematologists. And uh, I was welcomed with open arms by the hospital system and by the uh, other physicians here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of folks over time have said that we've been lacking a lot of different specialties. It sounds like you started filling part of that void back in 1996. Yes. Um, and you just open up a new practice. Yes. Well, at that point, I was hired by uh, actually a man who was the second uh, oncologist in Nevada. Wow. His, his name was Nafis Nagy. Uh -huh. And uh, he and Joe Qualiana, who was the first oncologist here in the, uh, in the state of Nevada, um, hired many people who came in. And then some of these individuals stayed in those practices. Others like myself spent uh, several years and then went out and joined other practices or started new practices. Well, we thank you for staying. Obviously, oh. uh, you're contributing to the well-being of the community. So we're grateful for that. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. So let's, let's dive in and talk a little bit about the practice. It's uh, you're the medical director. You've yes. got a, a, a 10 different, phys 10 other physicians there or? Well, we actually have eight uh -huh. medical oncologists, some of whom uh, also are practicing hematology. Okay. We have three nurse practitioners. Mm -hmm. And then we're also associated with a group of radiation oncologists who've been in this town for many years. We re recently merged with them. Okay. And we, in addition, are developing a surgical oncology subspecialty, and we have a wonderful uh, physician who is also uh, from the uh, great city of Las Vegas, namely Courtney Vito, who uh, did her undergraduate at University of Nevada, Reno, and then has spent time in different places in the country. Most recently, she was director of the breast program at City of Hope. Oh, wow. And uh, we just feel incredibly lucky to uh, have this physician with us, in a consummate professional, great surgeon, and I think will really be a medical luminary uh, in the community for many, many uh, years to come. She so you've got 10 practitioners. Um, do they all handle different areas? Obviously, cancer is pretty broad. There's different types yes. of cancer. Yes. Well, we have uh, one individual that is uh, Deepa Mocherla, who is specializing in breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'll be working with, uh, with Dr. Vito. Uh, we also have uh, other physicians with some areas of interest outside of... Um, general oncology. Some sp physicians like myself specialize in uh, specifically hematologic malignancies such as leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma. Though I do also see patients with lung cancer, bladder cancer, prostate cancer, brain cancer, colon cancer, and all those various varieties. As we, we grow, uh, to answer answer your question, we are developing subspecialties within medical oncology and hematology, specifically within hematology, where we do plan on having a dedicated individual who will be handling blood disorders, particularly benign blood disorders. Okay, what does the what does the practice look like in five years? It's I've been on this growth trajectory, yeah. and you get. Yeah. Well, right now we have four offices, um, eight physicians, three nurse practitioners with radiation oncologists as well. That's an additional two offices. We are opening up our main hub later this year, which will be about 55,000 to 60,000 wow. square feet. Uh, most people uh, see the uh, office building. It's at the corner of Charleston and Rancho. And uh, I've been involved with the design and uh, the development of this building. And it's just going to be incredible for patients. It's a building that sits in that Smith shopping center there, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I really think it's going to be part of what's been called the medical corridor mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in, in the media. And I think it's going to be strategically close 
to uh, the new medical school. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's going to be in the center of town. And really, I think we'll have a great place in the whole redevelopment of that part of the city. And it's really, really an exciting time for us and I think the city and particularly the medical community. Yeah, I sit on the advisory panel down there for the medical district and we just had a meeting on Monday and so we looked at the master plan and where everything's going to be. So you've got some prime real estate there. That's It's, it's incredibly exciting. What, so inside of that building, you talked that you're going to have uh, some different service lines. You're going to yes. have some radiation. Are you going to have imaging and laboratory? And why yes. is that all important to the practice? Well, it's Im- important for several reasons. One of those is that you, when you have labs on site, you're able to get the labs you want and some of them that you need to look at quickly. You can get answers on quickly. Uh, a lot of what we do uh, in the treatment areas, that is in the infusion centers, where we're giving either chemo- chemotherapy, immune therapy, or any sorts of uh, other uh, injections that we might give. We need to look at blood counts before we can do that. Uh, and also cancer is something that affects every organ system. So we need to know that somebody has good liver function, good kidney function, and that we're keeping them as healthy as we possibly can as they go through their treatment protocols. So the closer to the clinic that we can get these sorts of laboratory studies done, the better. Uh, In addition, uh, the radiologic studies, the PET scans, the CAT scans, the MRIs, and everything that goes along there, it's really important when we have that nexus of specialists when we have radiation oncologists surgeons medical oncologists so we can utilize utilize the team approach look at scans together be able to walk somebody down the corridor to see another subspecialist have tumor boards where it's not just one individual looking at a problem but multiple individuals and that's very very important both in our certification uh, pr- pr- procedure in developing a true center that can uh, offer people everything they need to stay here in Las Vegas for state-of-the-art treatment. But it's also very, very important for training of physicians for the next generation. Are you all going to be working closely with the new UNLV School of Medicine? And yeah, Absolutely. Most of us have a long tradition of being involved in teaching and in academics. Uh, as part of our practice, we have Dr. John Ellerton, who was actually the third oncologist mm-hmm. in the state of, uh, of Nevada. And he has been involved in teaching at the medical school for about 35 years and has done an innum- innumerable number of medical studies and uh, has helped to develop new drugs. The rest of us have all had uh, a hand in teaching over time, either rounding uh, on the wards with students, as it's oftentimes depicted on the popular medical shows, the uh, sort of long stream of white coats Mm -hmm. uh, walking from room to room, or involved in tumor boards, or having people... Uh, shadow us, as it's called, uh, in the clinic. Medical students, residents, uh, even fellows. So this building that's on Charleston and Rancho, it's going to encumber everything that's there. You're going to have all these different service lines. What other challenges do you see uh, being faced in the the diagnosis and treatment of cancer? And how's that building going to help you out in those areas? Well, I, I think there are uh, there are multiple challenges. Uh, I, I think access to primary care is very, very important uh, for people uh, from uh, all parts of the economic spectrum. Uh, some people cannot afford insurance. Some people uh, have a, a lack of a uh, knowledge base. Uh, Some people are in denial. Some people simply aren't getting the screening they need. And so I I think that uh, as we're able to develop a larger footprint as part of our organization with really, really good primary care 
practitioners, uh, the internists, the family practitioners, the nurse practitioners, the uh, obstetrician gy gynecologists. And as long as we get the word out about things, it's incredible how many people have symptoms that they just uh, discard. Things like weight loss or uh, masses uh, in, in, in their body or night sweats, uh, fevers. Many people uh, are scared, uh, do not want to see a doctor or uh, in denial. And so part of our mission will be community education as well. Yeah, well, obviously, early detection helps out in many different ways. It uh, allows you to treat at an earlier stage and probably a little less expense. A absolutely. And uh, when something is curable, perhaps, yeah. too. So we covered quite a bit. There's probably some things that you would like to talk about that we may not have touched on. Uh, what would you like to contribute out there that we haven't talked about yet? Well, I, I'd like to talk about what we're going to be able to uh, offer at, mm -hmm. our, at our new center. Uh, we will be offering what's offered in most oncology offices throughout the country, that is infusion services, uh, in addition uh, to that, uh, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, uh, which is uh, very, very important and which is now heavily advertised on television and is in fact changing the practice uh, of oncology. We also uh, will be closely allied with a palliative care program so we can make sure people are kept out of pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, We'll be serving their psychological needs as well. And we really want to be out there as a resource for information. If somebody wants to get on a trial, we don't want to deny them that. Being part of a trial is something that we as oncologists firmly believe in. That's how you really shift the whole paradigm in the way in which you're treating cancer, by doing studies and by offering people new treatments. So we'd like to get that sort of process going here as well. And most of all, we want to offer something that is as good as what people get at a major center, such as they have in Southern California, New York City, or Boston. And we'd like to be even better. Yeah. So uh, as you know, Inside Medicine reaches an audience of healthcare professionals, practitioners, uh, and those that are in the business of medicine. So obviously, uh, it's good for them to be aware of your services. If one of our viewers wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do it? How do they refer patients over to you? Uh, tell us a little bit about that process and how they could get in contact with you. Well, there's uh, one way which which we favor, and that is calling the office. Mm -hmm. uh, area code 702-724-8787. People can um, make an appointment uh, to see any one of our practitioners. We have four different offices. We also have a website which uh, allows one to email in. And uh, we are very, very proud of the fact that we offer very, very rapid clinical appointments so people can get right in to see a physician or a nurse practitioner. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Gollard, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, you shared a lot of great information with our viewers, and we're grateful and we're thankful for everything that you're doing to keep Southern Nevada healthier. Uh, kind of fulfills our mission of how do we improve the quality here in Southern Nevada. We've got amazing health care in Las Vegas. A lot of folks just don't know how to access it, and obviously you're expanding that access. So thank you for all that you're doing. Those of you that joined with us today, thank you. We look forward to seeing you back on Inside Medicine next Thursday. You make it a great day, and happy Thursday and happy weekend. Thank you.